Merry Christmas and welcome to Christmas at Crossroads. We're delighted that you've joined us today for a very special online Christmas presentation. My name is Brittany Kraft. And my name is Sean Kraft. We serve on the greeting team here at Crossroads. Christmas is a very special time to celebrate with friends and family. And it is our hope that the time we spend together will only add to your celebration. So sing along with us, laugh with us, and open your hearts to the greatest story ever told, the Christmas story. Once again, thank you for joining us. Enjoy. Enjoy. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Let me ask you a question, okay? What's your name? Adeline, and who is what is your name? Okay, what is your name? Nolan. <laughs> is your name Nolan? There's just a big grin. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell. Okay, Adeline, what was on your pajamas? What did you say it was on your pajamas? Santa Claus is on your pajamas. Okay, and is there something else? What else is on your pajamas? It's a what? Oh my goodness. Reindeer. 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 Do you think, do you, have you ever met Santa Claus? Yeah. You have met Santa Claus? And he liked me. And he liked you? Yeah. Oh my goodness. What was he wearing? Did he wear something special? Me wear. <laughs> okay. Red. He, wear red. he was wearing red? Did he have a big beard? Oh my goodness. He had a big beard. Did I wonder, I wonder, do you think do you think did he had a funny nose too? Yeah. Yeah, he had a funny nose. Oh my goodness. So what is your name? I'm Ethan Baca. Ethan Baca. And you are who? Tristan Baca. You're Tristan Baca. Are you guys brothers? No. Yes. <laughs> what? You yes. are? Okay, okay. What's on your pajamas? Santa Claus, reindeer, and that's all. Oh, there's reindeer and Santa Claus. I think there's something else on there, like a fa la 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 something, something going like what? That, is that what that is? Fa la la la. Yeah, I think that's what it says. No, yeah. it doesn't say mine says fa la la. Just yeah, yours does. I think does does Ethan say that too? I don't know that Ethan's does. No, he says. You just have you just have the fa la and you, oh, wow, so. Do you think, do you think Jesus has ever met Santa Claus? Yes. You do? Yeah. You do? I, I, I'm just going to ask my dad. He's very smart. Dad, has, dad. Je has Jesus seen Santa Claus? Like that today, guys. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's really good because, you know, when we have questions, we should ask our dads and our moms because they're really smart. Yeah. They help us, huh? Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the King of Israel, the first Noel. The angel did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no
there were shepherds keep living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Well, good morning, everybody, and Merry Christmas. I am just delighted to have a few minutes to, to come into your home and to share this Christmas holiday with you. You got your coffee? I got my coffee, and I'm going to enjoy my coffee right now, as a matter of fact. Look at this. Why am I doing that? Well, I just want you to relax for a few minutes together as we talk about the greatest story ever told. And really, Mike, you know, the, the whole emphasis of these last few weeks has been about a simple Christmas. In fact, simply Christmas. So we want to talk about that today for just a few minutes. I found a story that I thought was just fascinating, and I want to take just a minute and share a little bit of it with you. And here's, here's, the way this, here's the way it starts. Listen to this. It's pitch black. It's pitch black. And I am f and freezing cold. I should be in bed. Instead, I'm standing in the parking lot of a Tesco superstore in Bursladen, Hampshire. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's English. So this is from a, a UK publication called the Daily Mail. And they would put out a challenge to this young lady by the name of Tessa Cunningham to prepare for Christmas, get it, you ready for this, in 13 hours. So when we find her in the parking lot and it's dark and it's cold, she's getting ready to embark upon what she calls, ready for this, the toughest challenge known to woman. Now, what is the big deal about this 13-hour or uh, preparation? Here it is. You see, they did a little research and they found out that the average, the average individual will spend, ready, 288 hours getting ready for Christmas. If you do the math on that, that is 12 24-hour days. Now, I will tell you, Marcy and I don't spend 288 hours getting ready for Christmas. But using that as kind of their, uh, their line in the sand, they challenged Tessa to do it in 13 hours. So she embarked upon that challenge. And along the way, she would write things like, well, I did this and I saved 45 minutes, or I did this and I saved 133 hours. You know what's interesting about this particular story, this article, is that she didn't set out necessarily to simplify her Christmas, but it kind of happened accidentally. I don't know what your preparation looks like for Christmas. I don't know how many hours you have spent. But maybe today looks a little bit like this. The festivities are finished. The house is prepared. The tree is trimmed. The presents are wrapped. The kids are excited. The cookies are baked. The anticipation is building. The dinner is cooking. The family is arriving. The memories are flooding. The, the stress is growing. And the mess is overwhelming. Now, I, I don't know if that may describe what your home is like today. I, I hope it's, I, I hope none of that is happening, especially the stress and the mess. I, I hope that's not happening. The other things, yeah, that's just part of the day. And I wonder, I wonder in our preparation for Christmas, as we have looked to getting ready for this day and all the things that go into it, I, I wonder if at the end of it all, we will be able to say this was a great day. Or might there be some things that in our collective memory, when Christmas is all said and done and we write it in our history books as Christmas 2022 is complete, what's it, what is that going to look like? Will, will we have great memories? Will we have great experiences? Oh, I certainly hope so. What is, whatever we do, my hope and my prayer for you today is that it would be a simple Christmas. And here's, and here's what I mean. How can we do simply Christmas? Well, it's simply Jesus. It's simply Jesus. You see, Jesus is the main thing. And it is important that we would keep the main thing the main thing. Well, we want to talk for just a few minutes today 
from one of the great, from one of the great passages of Scripture. Uh, it, it's, Luke's, it, it's actually Luke's account of the birth of Jesus. And a few minutes ago, you heard, the, you heard a couple of our kids from Crossroads Kids read the pass, a portion of that passage of Scripture, and they did such a great job. I think most of us are familiar with the Christmas story. And there are some characters in that story. For example, Caesar Augustus. It was Caesar and his proclamation that got Joseph and Mary to travel to Bethlehem. That was Joseph's ancestral home. And they had to go there to kind of register for the tax that Caesar was imposing upon the empire. Now think about it for a moment. This was anything but simple. Why? Well, Mary's nine months pregnant, and this is a seven to ten day journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. A nine month pregnant young lady on the back of a donkey or walking. I, I can't even imagine the stress, the how, being overwhelmed with all that is happening, the experiences. And then they arrive in Bethlehem, and what do they find? They find more complexity. They can't find a place to stay. And the inn is full. And while they received the only thing they had, which is a stable, the innkeeper did what he could do. But yet, what was he, what was he experiencing? He was experiencing anything but simple. Maybe the simplest of all were the shepherds. Uh, the shepherds were an outcast class of people. But here they are doing a very menial task on the side of a hillside, probably a very dark night. And in the midst of this, the angels show up and tell the message of Jesus. And this story is beautiful, but it's also really simple. And being that it's simple, what I want to do is I want to just give you just a few words. In fact, 11 words, 11 words that'll really tell the story. And you're going to say, oh man, that's cool. We're going to be done here really quick and we're going to get back to everything we're doing. <laughs> well, I'm going to do a little bit more than 11 words, but there are 11 main words that I want to leave with you. The first two are don't fear. Don't fear. Think about that for a moment. And these are the words of the angel that, that were spoken to the shepherds. And that's what I want you to focus on. So don't fear. On a quiet night, dark night, the sky lights up with supernatural pyrotechnics. The angels are there and they say to the shepherds, don't be afraid. Well, they would be afraid. This is an unusual moment. These are, this, is a, this is a startling moment. And it just reminds us that even in some of the calmest environments, we face fear. I don't know what you might be facing today, but fear is real. It rears its head from time to time in our lives. Whether it's the fear of failure or the, the fear of our future, it, it, fear paralyzes us. It keeps us from being all that God desires that would we, we would be. Listen to what Psalm 118 tells us. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. Isn't that a great promise? The Lord is with you today. In, in your particular environments right now, the Lord is with you. And we should never be afraid. The simple, the simple message of Christmas is don't fear. Here are four words for you. Good news and great joy. I'm telling you, when, when I am faced with this dilemma, someone comes to me and says, Gary, I have some bad news and I have some good news. What do you want first? Maybe you've experienced something just like that. I always tell them I want the bad news first. Why? Because I want to get the bad out of the way. I want to get to the good. I want to find out what's good. And when the angels talk to the shepherds, they say, this is good news. And the simple message of Christmas is that this is good news. It's the best news of all. I've said numerous times over the last few weeks that this is the greatest story ever told. This is good news. The, the second two words, I love them. This is good news of what? great joy. Not just good joy, but great joy. And I, I love the fact that we should celebrate. Joy should be an expression of this holiday. I hope today in your home and with your family and with your friends, there is joy unspeakable and it is full of glory. That the joy of the Lord is truly your strength today. You may even before the day is over sing a song like this. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. 
The simple message of Christmas is it is good news of great joy. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 30 says this, good news makes you feel better. And I would say, yes, it does. Good news of great joy. The next, the next two words are all people. Now, I said a minute ago about the shepherds. They were an outcast class of people. In fact, they were so untrustworthy, they, they could not testify in a court of law. No one trusted them. And so you look at this, and this is the first group of people that hear about Jesus being born, is to this very common uh, group of individuals. It just gives me hope, and it should give you hope as well, that all people are, are the beneficiaries of this good news that should bring great joy into our lives. The good news is available to all of us. It's not exclusive, but it's the most inclusive message of all. And that's what makes Christmas so marvelous. It's an inclusive message. And I'm grateful for that because, and I think you are as well, because there are times I don't, I don't feel particularly worthy of God's love, God's care, or God's attention. But Jeremiah tells us this. God speaking through Jer the prophet Jeremiah says, I have loved you with an everlasting love, with unfailing love. I have drawn myself, drawn you to myself. How good is that? The simple story is for all people. And Acts chapter 2, we read these words, and everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. It's an inclusive message. It's a great message. This is good news of great joy that is to all people. And here it is. The next, the next word is Savior. Savior. You see, all of us fall short of God's standard of righteousness. I'm in need of a Savior. We are in need of a Savior. And God knew that, and He provided His one and only Son to save us, to rescue us to deliver us. He sent the chosen one, the Messiah, for you and for me. Our rescuer is Jesus. That's the simple message of Christmas. And you, you may know this verse. I trust you do. And if not, I would encourage you to, to learn it and remember it. God so loved the world, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have, would, would have everlasting life. What an incredible Savior God has provided for us, His one and only Son. The simple message of Christmas is about a Savior. And then finally, the last two words are peace and hope. And I draw those words from a translation of Luke chapter 2, verse 14, from the Passion Translation. And here's what the Passion Translators wrote. Glory to God in the highest realms of heaven. Here it is. For there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. I, I tell you, there's nothing quite like being at peace in our heart and having hope for today and the future. A peace that transcends all understanding, that guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. A hope that is unswerving, that we can anchor our lives to. That's the message of Christmas. That's the story that's here. That's the simplicity of this extraordinary message of Christmas. Well, I, I mentioned a, this young lady, Tessa Cunningham. And let me just come back to her for just a moment. So when she accepted that 13-hour challenge, at the end of it all, here's what she wrote. She said, so have I really done Christmas? Of course not. I've discovered shortcuts that I'll remember forever. I'll never again waste 13 days preparing for Christmas, but I won't be repeating this experiment either. So why do, I, why do I reference that? Because regardless of the complexity of your preparation and your celebration, don't miss the opportunity. Don't miss the opportunity. And don't miss the simplicity of the Christmas message. Jesus is the main thing. Keep him the main thing. Remember, don't fear, because this is good news of great joy. For a Savior has come for all people.
And he brings to us peace and hope. Pray with me if you would. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for Christmas. And thank you for this amazing message that is simple, but so profound. And I pray your blessing upon each person and each family today. Let this be a great day of celebration. And if there is one who is watching this today and doesn't have a personal relationship with you, I pray right now they would just say the name Jesus, which means the Lord saves. And Lord, be their Savior today as they declare you Savior and Lord. Give us a great day of celebration. We give you all the thanks and praise for today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings to you all, and have a Merry Christmas. Bless you. Look at me right here, and we're going to say it together. On the count of three, we're going to say Merry Christmas. One, two, three. Merry, oh, come on. <laughs> come on, here with me. Do it with me. One, two, three. Merry Christmas. Good job. Good job. All right, give me a high five. High five. Yes, and a yes. Yes, all right, you guys did great. Yeah. Do you wanna, would you like to have one big present? Or, yeah. or 10 small presents? 10 small presents. 10 small no, presents then, or one big present? What do you think? One big present. One big present or 10 small ones? One big all right, present. one big present. Thank you, you guys did great. You're good, thank you. And one more question, one more question. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> what? Can you sit too? Yeah. Okay. You can you can sit too. Look at this. We have some friends. So I have one more question. Do you think that Santa ever met Jesus? Oh yeah. See and this we have a present. Okay, okay, real good. Well, thank you for your great answers. Listen, look at everybody, look at me. Say one thing with me. Would you all say a big Merry Christmas? Say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay, really loud, really loud. One more time. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Excellent. Good job. All right. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in, cl in cloth lying in a manger. We want to say thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that your Christmas day is filled with family, joy, and celebration. If there is anything that we can do for you, please do not hesitate to ask. You can email office at gotocrossroads.com with any questions. Next Sunday, we'll be bringing in a new year, 2023, with one service at 10 a.m. and breakfast at 9 a.m. We would love to see you there. Until then, may God bless you, and let us say one more time, Have, have a, a Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas.